Are you looking for a town that has that small town feel, uh, but also has a ton of culture? It's got a cute downtown and is even a college town? Well, in this video, we're headed to Overland, Ohio. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland. I'm Patty, Patty sells CLE, and I make videos about all things Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and even down South. And you know the drill, if you don't wanna miss any of my videos, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and leave some comments. Okay, so last week I did a video on Medina County, Valley City, and I didn't realize, I guess I did, but I've never done a video on how low property taxes are in Medina County, like significantly lower than Cuyahoga County, which is where Cleveland is. Um, Medina counties, like most of the cities in Medina County, are less than one and a half percent. So, and with all the videos I do, I'm like, this. Are, there's a reason, there are some benefits for um, buying a home outside of Cuyahoga County, and one of them is the property taxes. So, in this video, I'm going to give a pros and cons of what it's like to live in Oberlin. And I speak from experience because I actually lived in Oberlin for a few years, um, so I have a pretty good understanding of, of the pros and cons of living in Oberlin. So let's get started. All right, one of the pros of living in Oberlin is the property tax rate. Um, it's not the lowest in Lorain County, but it's under 2%. It's like, it's right around 2%, 1.99. Now, um, Oberlin uh, is made up of a bunch of different townships. And when I lived in Oberlin, I lived in New Russia Township. And it just, it's just it was like a little bit less. It was like 1.87 were the property taxes there. Um, but it was part of Oberlin schools. Um, so if you're in the city of Oberlin proper, the tax rate, your property tax rate is less than two, about 1.99. So that is a pro. Now a con, well, I don't know if it's a con because I was just looking this up. And I've done a video about taxes. It was about all about taxes explained. And we have to pay income tax, usually through what's called RETA, Regional Income Tax Authority. Um, I live in Lorraine right now, and I have to pay taxes. Um, and I think I've mentioned that a lot of cities, like when I lived in North Olmstead, I got a credit for 100% of what I paid in income tax for the city I was working in, Cleveland. So I never really had to pay North Olmstead because they gave me the entire amount as a credit. Lorraine does not. I get like a quarter percent off, and it's a big con of living in Lorraine. Um, now, Oberlin, I just looked, they don't have an income tax, but here's what they do have. They have a school income tax. So that is separate, you know, and a lot of time with your employer, you know, if you're not, they're only gonna take out the tax for the city you're working on, working in, unless you have them say, hey, can you take out, if you know, because there's no credit for the school income tax. You're not gonna get any credit. It's 2% of your income and, uh, we got socked with this. My accountant didn't realize when I moved to Oberlin that I had to pay a school income tax and they, it was ridiculous. It was a nightmare. So that's kind of a con. There is no income tax, but there's a school tax and it's separate. So you would have to, if you want it taken out of your, your paycheck, you'd have to set that up with your, your human resources and your payroll department. Um, so those are pros and cons about taxes. Um, let's talk about some more pros. The culture in Oberlin. Oberlin is home to Oberlin College, um, and it's been written up. It's one of the one of the premier. It's not an Ivy League school, but it is a premier college. Liberal um, language arts. Uh, they're huge in music and art. Um, so it's a very well known college. Many famous people have gone to Oberlin College. Um, Ed Helms from The Office and Hangover, and um, that chick. She was in the that TV show on HBO Girls, I can't remember her name, and she's done all kinds of stuff, but I can go on and on about all the people in that have graduated from Oberlin College. But what's nice, a big pro about living in a college town is you get access to all of the events that they put on. Um, they have a music conservatory, which is rated in the top three in the nation. I'm mad I never went to any of the, the events there. Um, they have, they own their own art museum and it's free to the public. Um, and I've been through it. It's super cool. And they do this program with the college students that you can get, borrow a piece of art and keep it in your, your, your dorm or wherever you're living for the school year, which is pretty cool. 
Um, so the buildings are really nice. They keep up, it's called Tappan Square, which is the little square in the middle of town. And they have this big, what is it, a memorial. And that's dedicated to the school. So Oberlin College, having the college right there is a huge, huge pro. Okay, um, now here's a pro and also a con. I'm gonna start with the con. There's not a, for being a college town, there is not a lot of nightlife. There you have one bar, the Fev, and that's about it. We love the Fev, it's more of a restaurant, but upstairs it gets a little crazy at night, but there's no real bars. They had a bar, but they closed it during COVID. It was a um, famous Dave's, Dave's Cosmic Subs, which are awesome. And in the back they had a whole bar, but it's closed down now. Um, they have the Slow Train Cafe, um, but there's really no nightlife. So if you're, you know, looking to go to bars, even if you're living there, I know when I lived there, I had friends come like, let's go to the bars. I'm like, there are none, no bars. Uh, so to me, that's kind of a con, but the pro is I love walking around downtown Oberlin and there's the Apollo Theater, which is a Cleveland based uh, movie theater. They have another one on West 65th Street in Cleveland. Um, and it's like discount movies, but although they're not old movies, like I just drove by this morning and they're playing Barbie and I can't remember what else. So pro and a con, there's a lot of different, like we love the Fev. My husband and I have been going there since we were dating. It's We were just there for dinner the other night. Um, it's one of our favorite spots. Um, love it. There's Lorenzo's Pizza there, which I've not been to in years, but we love that as well. So pro and con, nightlife, restaurants, bar scene, you know, there's an Aladdin's. There's just not a lot to do to do. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you another pro about Oberlin. Um, and it's probably attached to the culture and things going on. And in the summertime, they put on over 500 concerts in the square. They do parades. They have this annual chalk walk. Now, I've never attended any because in the summertime, if you watched any of my videos, you know I spend my summertime up in Marblehead on the weekend, so I miss a lot of the stuff. So, but it is cool for the residents there. Um, so that's definitely a huge pro. Another huge pro is the bike path. We still go on the bike path. I walked it this morning. It goes from Oberlin all the way to Elyria. So it goes like 25, 30 miles and then even goes past Oberlin and past Kipton. Um, when we got e-bikes a couple years ago, we're like, let's just see how far we can go. And it just went on and on and on. So that bike path is huge. And there's, I can't, like every other block, there's a way to get into onto this bike path. And it's just, it's well-maintained. People are really, you know, th there's bikers on it. There's runners, walkers. It's just, the bike path is awesome. Um, cons. <sighs> Some of the houses being a college town are not well taken care of. So... There's a couple of areas that aren't very nice. Being a, it's a lot of Oberlin is very, very rural. So you could have this beautiful home and then next door to it is like a farmhouse that's like run down. So the housing's kind of iffy in Oberlin. Um, in fact, we still own our house in Oberlin and we have, to, our tenants did not take very good care of it. And I feel bad for the neighbors cause they've been there for over 10 years and and it's not in the shape it should be. But um, the average sale price in Oberlin is about $250,000. Now, that being said, there is a house for sale that's almost a million dollars. It's like an octagon thing, and you'll see it in the video when I do it. But I actually went through a house. I'm going to put it up here. It's right next to the bike path. That's how I found it. And I actually went in. It was empty, so I went and videoed it. I'm going to have it right here. It's an ancient house. It's on the Ohio Historic Homes list. In fact, I have it downstairs um and they they left a whole thing of all the different historic homes so that's really cool about Oberlin there's so many historic homes and talking about history Oberlin is steeped in history it was annexed in 1833 and by 1852 it was it was a huge integral part of the Underground Railroad. And when you walk through Oberlin, you'll see monuments and statues depicting all that. And I was on the Oberlin website and they were t there's different, um, all these different homes like the Monroe House, the Jewett House, the old one room schoolhouse, and they've all been restored and you can go through them. I highly recommend it. Um, also another huge pro for Oberlin 
it has a Frank Lloyd Wright house. Um, I drove by it. You'll see it when I go through, but you can't drive up the driveway. You have to actually walk up there, and I didn't want to do it because there's nowhere really to park. And it's open a couple times a year, and you can go through it and tour. And I've walked through it before. It's kind of cool. But yeah, to have a Frank Lloyd Wright house, um, it's pretty cool. Um, what else do they have? Oh, they're another. I guess I got a lot more pros than cons. Another pro is they have a really awesome rec center. And they have the pool there, a huge swimming pool. A lot of the um, surrounding school districts have their um, swim team practice there. They have a splash pad. Um, they have, I used to work out there, full gym. They have classes. They have fields for baseball, all of that stuff. So really, really cool, awesome rec center. I think it was a little pricey um, even for residents to join it, but it was worth it because it was so close and convenient. Okay, and if you like golf, well, this would be a pro for you as well. Oberlin has its own golf club. It's called the Oberlin Golf Club, and it is one of the country's oldest golf courses. In Yeah, it, one of the country's oldest golf courses around. And when you're walking on where we pick up the um, the walking path, we walk right through it. And um, they're, they're, it's so well taken care of. There's always people golfing. Um, it's really, really cool. Love that. I've never golfed there. I'm not a big golfer, but it's very, very popular. Um, let's talk about schools. Schools are rated like a C, I think. I haven't looked it up. Um, but what they do have, so Oberlin is very diverse, which I'm going to say is a pro. Extremely diverse. If you're looking for a diverse community, Oberlin is it for it. Um, they have, you know, like I said, homes that are a million dollars, and they also have Section 8 homes. And anytime you get that big split in your socioeconomic, uh, you know, levels, you're going to have, it's just the way the world works. You're going to have a disparity in their school systems. But the programs they offer, Oberlin was the first school district in Ohio to offer the International Baccalaureate um, program, which is huge. And it's it's meant to be um, help students be more prepared for college. Uh, they do better on their tests. Um, that being said, if you meet all of the requirements to get into Oberlin College, they offer scholarships. And I, I don't know how many they give out a year, but when I lived in Oberlin, our neighbors across the street, all three of their kids were awarded the scholarship. Now, only one of them actually went. The other two wanted to get the heck out of Oberlin, but still, they would have gotten a free ride. And Oberlin College, here's a con if you want your kids to go to Oberlin College, it is one of the most expensive private schools in the country. And probably about 10 years back, it was written up in U U.S. News and World Report. It was the most expensive private college in America, more expensive than any other Ivy League school. So there you go. Um, so let's, I talked about homes. So the median home price, I said, is about 250 I showed you the one up there. So I think all that needs to be said right now is let's get on the road and check out Oberlin. And as always, if you're looking to move to the Cleveland area, or if you're already here looking to buy or sell, give me a call. My number's right below my email. Give me a call, text, anything, email, whatever I said, email. I'm here to help and enjoy Oberlin. Mm -hmm.